Please don't no comment. <laughs> Wait, I think I've accidentally clicked on go live. Yes, I see it's live. Mm, so let's go with this uh, cool thing. And we are live. And someone just left the live stream. <laughs> <laughs> Good opening. That's a great opening. Anyways, guys, welcome back or welcome to our new live stream show that we will hopefully keep up this time and it will be more often than just once a month. Today I'm joined here by Michael, Denisa and Madara, who are and, and Yaro, who just disconnected. And today we are gonna just give you a brief introduction into what is it that we want to be doing in these live streams. And we will also give you uh, the wrap up of the last week's news here in Denmark. Uh, without further ado, well, actually we need to wait for Yaro, so there is gonna be a further ado. Um, but first and foremost, let's just talk about um, why did we decide to do the live streams and what was happening with the project over the past few months. Um, for those of you who are not following, uh, what am I saying? <laughs> um, you guys know that we are, hey, there is Yaro. Yeah. Well, sorry, guys, yeah. you know, sorry, the moment the chat appeared, you know, my phone exploded, you know, um, sort of in attempt to, to repair it, you know, I, I ended up logging off, my bad, sorry. Oh, geez, such Some a blunder in front of me. <laughs> Okay, so welcome back. Uh, so what was happening with the project over the past weeks is that we were working quite hard uh, with all of the people that you see here and also the people that you do not see here with the community of Students of Our Guide um, to push the project to a whole new level. And uh, we are slowly succeeding at that. And one of the things that we will be doing from now on is to get in touch with you um, through these weekly live streams where we will, we will be telling you about the latest news, but also about certain topics that we will be announcing on, live, on uh, social media so that you can also join the conversation on the live stream. We'll let you know more about that uh, in upcoming uh, status updates on Facebook. Uh, we were working hard to make our website as easy as possible for the newcomers to Denmark, which might be a bit counterproductive now that the corona happened and maybe people will just stay at home, but uh, you cannot plan all of the things in life, right? Um, and we have also found out that it's pretty difficult to make videos when everything is closed down and, um, and you are studying masters at, in Denmark. So we will just um, turn all of the content into the live streams and try to communicate with you guys through this medium instead, because as far as we can tell, it's a bit easier than making videos. So there was a lot of talk from me, um, maybe Yaro, do you want to say something to the people that are watching, to 19 people that are watching this right now? Oh, geez. Okay. Uh, so much pressure at the beginning. Uh, I think I would like to say bye. Welcome, guys. You know, this is our first stream in a long time, as already mentioned. So it might not be 100% perfect, and it might be also a little bit short. And we have a topic and a structure for you. So, you know, buckle yeah, up and yeah, keep I going. I hate to break this down to you, but you have turned into a robot, and or at least your microphone has. Oh, jeez. Yeah. You were such a nice speech. Come on. <laughs> I'm sorry. You probably have to replug your headphones or something. Yeah. Okay, so my speech is over. Hold on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So just because right now there are people watching this stream that uh, might have followed the videos or have followed the social media and they only see my face in there. So now I think it's a nice place for you, Denisa, Madara and Michael to introduce yourself. So maybe Michael, you can start off and tell them a bit about who you are and what you do at this project. So my name is Michael. I come from the Czech Republic. I live in Roskilde. Um, I study international sales and marketing management at Zealand. 
Um, and I came to Denmark uh, two, two and a half years ago. And at SSG, I do the news section. I'm the news correspondent. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you for sharing and goodbye, Yara. So, <laughs> oh, you kind of plan these things. Um, well, Madara, could you tell us a bit about who you are? Yes, my name is Madara and I come from Latvia. Um, I joined Student Survival Guide as social media manager. So if you have any great ideas you would love to share with us, please write to us on Instagram, Facebook. We will get back to you as soon as possible. So see you there. So she's the person that was taking care of the social media in the past week. So she is the person that is interacting with you most often on Instagram and Facebook. It's also all of the other people that have access, but uh, she's the go-to person. So thanks for that. Um, Denisa. Yeah, hi guys. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'm Denisa and I come from Romania. Uh, I joined Student Survival Guide uh, in March this year. And uh, I'm an editor here, so I'm going through the old articles um, that Student Survival Guide made until now, and I'm going to be writing new articles um, together with other contributors. Um, and uh, yeah, if uh, what we write about mostly is uh, informative content uh, about Denmark and about the life here, uh, studying here and so on. So if there is any subject that uh, you would like to hear more about, please let us know and we'll make sure to write something about it. Thank you. This is, uh, I, I'm glad that you mentioned it. Like, guys, if you ever need any help with something, like reach out to us. The best is to use uh, either Facebook or just write us an email. Uh, we reply to those. Uh, sometimes it takes a bit, a bit of a time. Uh, but more often than not, we get back to you and try to answer your question as soon as possible. So now that we have this out of the way, let's, um, get, uh, let's give the spotlight to Michael, our news correspondent. And let's briefly talk about last week in Denmark. So, Michael, what happened? Thank you, Michael. Um, this week was pretty boring, actually. Um, nothing very big happened. Um, as far as the current update, uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine is still on pause due to the possible connection between the vaccine and the vaccination and the uh, and the possibility of uh, having blood clots. Um, Maybe in order to save the PR of the company, uh, they changed their name to Vaxzervia, um, which might help, but might not. We're going to see. Um, also, talking about the vaccines, um, there has been a big talk about the uh, Corona Pass. The Corona Pass is going to be probably the, a, a part of our daily life, um, and that is because from tomorrow, from Tuesday, uh, people are going to need Corona Pass uh, for getting a haircut or for getting a tattoo. Also, a bit later, uh, it's also going to be needed for eating inside of a restaurant, not, not only outside. Um, a Corona Pass is something one can get either after vaccination or after having uh, like a confirmation that one has had the Corona infection, but uh, this this confirmation can't be older than twelve weeks, or one has to have a test not older than seventy two hours, which is three days. Um, so so it's not like uh, we are pressed to get a vaccine, but uh, yeah, it's going to be a must to to either get vaccinated or to get tested very often. Um, as far as the politics section. Um, there are a couple of Danish kids that are in Syria. Um, they they are, were born there to their parents that are Danish or were Danish. Um, and that's because their parents, they went to Syria to fight along the Islamic State. Um, because of that, the parents were stripped of their Danish citizenship. And now Dan Denmark is trying to find out if or how they are going to take those kids to Denmark without their parents, which is something Danish Ministry for Foreign Affairs wants, but that's against all the uh, conventions that Denmark is a part of. So we're going to see how that's going to turn out. Um, also, many political parties um, said that Denmark should open for um, 
for vaccinated tourists or foreigners because uh, for the last couple of months uh, the only way to enter Denmark was to have a valid reason which means to, to start a studies or to, to, to work uh, or to visit a family. Um, so uh, yeah, maybe we are going to go the same way as Iceland does. Um, there is also a talk about uh, automatic lockdowns all the way to the parish level. Um, that would mean that uh, if in some parish, which is like a smaller, it's smaller than Comune, in Denmark there are around 2,000 parishes. Um, if the incidence of Corona is going to be over 200, um, that means that the, the parish is going to close down, like the schools and other services. And uh, last topic is the culture. Um, there has been a big talk about World Cup in Qatar in 2022. Um, and this mostly because uh, many of the workers um, that are helping building the site died. Um, I saw a calculation that uh, for one football player that is going to play there, uh, 32 um, or 36 um, workers died. Which is which is a lot. So we're gonna see uh, that there is actually a risk of boycott uh, from Norway. I heard. So we're gonna see what is gonna happen. Um, the another news is that uh, Eurovision is gonna take place and it's gonna take place possibly with the audience, as uh, the Dutch government gave a green light to um, to audience. That means up to three and a half thousand people can be gathered inside of the arena in Rotterdam. Um, which is which is great. I'm looking forward for that. And last but not least, um, the ship called Ever Given, which was blocked in the world trade by blocking the Suez can Channel, um, sails free after after one week uh, of uh, being there. It's we not we, but people pe people ma managed to unblock it, and now the trade or the the channel is unblocked. So that's so we are. That's what we are also happy about. And yeah, I'm giving the word back to Michael. So thank you for the digest of the latest news in Denmark, Michael. Um, so long live the evergreen memes. Um, those are going to be missed dearly. Also those 400 billion that have been gone together with the ship. Um, but that's life. That happens. Luckily, things are fine here in Denmark. There are no ships being stuck on the streets, at least not in our city. Maybe in Copenhagen that happens. Huh, that would be a funny thing. Anyways, the topic of today's live stream is, among other things, also to inform people that are watching this and are interested in learning about how is it to study in Denmark now that corona pandemic is happening. This was something that we actually wanted to make a video about, but then we figured... That is difficult. So we just decided to do a live stream about it instead. So guys, if someone right now is watching and they are from Spain or if they are from Italy, from, from Canada, from USA, how would you say that studying in Denmark is right now compared to how it usually is in the world? So Denisa, how is, how is the study in Denmark these days? All right. Well, uh, right now all the classes are, are online for bachelor students and master's students and that also includes uh, exams uh, and uh, projects. So all the communication you have to do with your teachers or your classmates uh, has to be online, unfortunately. Um, uh, this also means that we are spending most of the day at home uh, in, front of front of, in front of your screen. So you might want to take care of your health a bit more <laughs> this time because you are sitting so much. Um, both your physical health uh, as well as mental health. And uh, spending so much time at home under lockdown also means that you can't meet so many people. Um, and it's especially hard if uh, you are new to Denmark when you don't know anyone. But then again, um, it's still possible to communicate online. So try to do, as, to do it as much as possible and try to be proactive, let's say, uh, when it comes to uh, social interaction. Do you guys have any, anything else to add? Maybe Yaro? Yes, uh, I can try if you can hear me. Yeah. 
I believe you can. Perfect. Yes, uh, as Dennis has summarized, yes, it's true that the current situation is not exactly great. And But even though I, I believe that uh, our online system of studying, you know, is I say, no, it's good enough for us to learn all the necessary skills. Uh, as mentioned, and I think this is the most grave part of the of the fact that we are we are learning online is the is the social aspect. You know, I think we know that quite a number of Danish universities works on this uh, practical level where we sort of try to balance the amount of the theory, amount of the practice, and generally. For me, it feels that, you know, in the last year, you know, when we had the corona, I actually learned quite a lot, but I don't think I developed all the soft skills that, you know, sort of comes together with the with doing project with the, pe- with the people. So this part, I, I, I feel that I'm lacking on this part, and I believe there, there are more people that feel the same, at least I hope. Well, we are living in a world where every conversation begins with, can you hear me? Can, can, can you hear me? Is, is this on? Can you hear me? And you know what? I, I blame Skype for this because if it wasn't for Skype and Microsoft intervening into Skype, that would not be an issue. Like in Zoom, when you when you try to speak to someone and they cannot hear you on the other end, it, it, it flashes that small bar that says your microphone is muted, right? When, yeah. when they cannot hear you. So instinctively, you, you don't have to ask them, like, can you hear me? Because you can see it. If Skype would implement that, those... 10 odd years ago that it was beginning, then we would never have this sentence ever. Like, can you hear me? Because you would know if someone cannot hear you. And it's incredibly easy piece of script that they could just implement, but they didn't. So I blame Skype for wasting thousands of seconds of my life asking people if they can hear me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but you know, this can also be a nice breaking question. If you have to talk to someone you have never met before. Yeah, of course, it's, it's, it's no, no more is it uh, good afternoon. How are you doing? It's more about, hey, can you hear me? Is this working? Is my, is my microphone good? Um, so, Madara, what would you say, how do you see the situation regarding corona? Is it going to change anytime soon when it comes to universities? Uh, well, as far as I know, um, there have been a plan of the slow opening of universities. But I'm not very sure how it is about uh, students. But anyone who wants to visit the university, I believe starting from tomorrow, is the same as going to a hairdresser or tattooist, as Michael mentioned. You must have a negative test or uh, you have the corona vaccine. So in general, um, yes, it definitely will become better for sure. Uh, This is very plausible for Denmark because compared to other countries, I think the opening is much more slowlier than here. So I believe that the new students who will come to study here around August will be able to actually start uh, the studies physically. Michael wanted to say something while Madara was speaking. Yes, (laughs) yes. Um, There is actually, I I can add to the the opening plan um, because as far as I know, and I can't uh, remember the concrete dates, but uh, starting from very soon, uh, we're going to be able to come back to campus, um, and that is, uh, and that is uh, for first for twenty percent of the of the presence, and then up to fifty percent, which means that half of our classes mm-hmm. would be online and half on the campus. Um, that's that's what's uh, in the in the opening scheme which was which was put out by by the government so we're gonna we're gonna see what is gonna happen and i'm hoping to get back to campus soon yeah so to just sum it up for those of you who are watching this thank you for taking your screen again here um so if you're planning to come to study in denmark from september there is a quite a big chance that you will be able to go on campus for at least part of your studies. We cannot promise you, of course, that you will be there all the time, every day, socializing and drinking beers as it used to be. Good old times, right? But at least you will get to see your classmates, uh, you know, other than like this. Um, so the prerequisite for this is that you will have a corona vaccine or that you will get tested every three days. Or is there some other possibility for this, Michael? Maybe if 
everyone gets a vaccine then maybe you don't have to have or what is the situation with this um the well there is also a chance to to get back on the campus or to get a corona passport if you if you have had corona but so far it looks like the the confirmation for positive uh for positive test or after a positive test um is is valid for only 12 weeks after after the test um but yeah we we're gonna see how it's gonna go with the vaccination um it's steadily going uh even though now uh, we didn't vaccinate as much due to the uh, denmark's ban or not ban but denmark put a put a astrazeneca vaccine on pause which uh, really messed up with the uh, with the numbers of vaccinated um so yeah but uh, the the experts say that we need at least 60 to 70 percent of the of the population vaccinated in order to get uh herd immunity um so we, we are hoping and uh so, it's still and it's so still unclear um how long the immunity from vaccine lasts for so it might be that we just have to re-vaccinate every year but if that's the way how we can keep the life the way as we lived it before then i'm i'm for that yeah so that's some good news and some bad news the bad news is that before you go to campus you need to get corona as michael just said so that's that's very sad so just go around uh, licking the seats on, in metro or something so you get some immunity and then you can go on campus uh please don't do that of course but of course, uh, the rules uh, will also change because they usually change every some time. So we cannot uh, tell what's going to happen for sure. That's that's another thing. That's a big big part of the channel. Before every video, we say that you know we are we are just a bunch of guys with a camera. Don't trust us with your life. Um, mm -hmm. So common sense applies, of course. But for those people that are thinking about maybe going to Denmark to study, this is good news because chances are you will be having a normal education, which might not be possible in some other parts of the country. And if you will be going to live and study in Denmark, then of course, go to our website, studentswalaga.dk and find some blogs that are gonna help you along this journey. So now that we are talking about this and the Corona situation might soon, might soon be over uh, in Denmark, at least partially as we were talking about right now, what is something that you guys have enjoyed doing doing during the lockdown? Sorry, um, that might not be possible after the lockdown has ended or the Corona situation has ended. Yeah, what is your favorite activity that you have picked up over the past few months that you will miss because the Corona will be over? Yeah, you know, I maybe I will make it sound nerdy, but I kind of enjoyed education or going to school you know since as we or as we all know you know all the education was turned online therefore i could do it from home therefore i could wake up like two minutes before the beginning of the lecture and you know not really bordering putting some you know decent clothes on i could do it in my pajama or in my case in my trusty bathroom and nobody really demanded me to do anything else so even though i believe that this uh, this corona pandemic sort of like intro reintroduced you know all of, or showed us all the potential of you know education and communication doing business online so i believe it will remain here in certain form i think that you know eventually i will miss the fact that i will have to go that i don't have to go to school personally so you will miss that fact or not miss that fact yeah no yeah i, I I will miss the fact that I can I can no longer wake up two minutes before the class uh, before the class and stay in my bathroom. Yeah, yeah, but you know I think my my humble opinion is that it will never go back to normal as long as the technology infrastructure is in place in countries such as Denmark. Then, you know, there is a very little chance that we will just go back to traditional offline teaching. I think this what we are doing right now is the future, and we have just thanks to Corona gotten like. 10 miles ahead of ourselves and we just have to get used to this there are so many good things that are coming off from this for example i'm looking elegant yet i have uh, just my sweatpants underneath and i really enjoy this i can look professional while being comfy at home but michael what is for you something that you have enjoyed during during the corona 
um, that is not possible or might not be possible in a few months? Um, I would say, well, I really like my job. Um, I don't think that my job as a as a te tester for Corona is going to be outfaced very soon. We actually had a talk about this at work today, and um, we think that we are not going to stop testing um, like we do now for at least another year, maybe a year and a half. Uh, we just we just have to see uh, how it's going to develop. But yeah, um, my my job is the best job I've ever had, um, and that's something. If I would be to lose it all of a sudden, that's something I'm definitely going to miss a lot. So, so could you tell people what is your job? Because maybe they are watching and they do not know what is that you do. Yes, I test for for Corona, so that means that um, many times uh, I just stick that uh, cotton swab to people's throats. Um, but I got promoted kind of uh so for example today i was the coordinator which means that i was the boss for the whole test center and i was responsible for the for the for, for all the operations which was awesome when people actually listen to you and <laughs> yeah. okay okay well that sounds like something you will miss though it's a bit of a tragedy that you know if, if it continues on that's not very good but if you lose the job it's also not very good. So I don't know what to do in this situation, whether to be happy or to be sad. But I'll just be happy for you. Yeah. So Madara, what is what is something for you that you wish you can continue doing, but maybe it will not be possible? Uh, yes, before I answer this question, so guys, if you have any questions to us, you are feel free, free to write it in the chat so we can answer it to you. Yeah. Uh, um, yes. We are watching the chat, but it seems like there are no uh, <laughs> questions coming in, or maybe just this platform broke and therefore we cannot see the questions. So it's either yeah. of those two. If you if you are watching this right now, then do us a favor and try to type a comment. If we do not reply and do not see it, that means that we cannot see the comments. And at least we'll know that people actually want to be friends with us. It's just the platform that's broken, not us. Please continue. Uh, well, I will agree with the others that. Of course, I enjoyed being at home and literally waking up three minutes before the lesson starts. But at the same time, uh, I really didn't feel it as much because I actually graduated already and I had my internship during that time uh, physically at the office. So I really didn't feel it as much. So I was very busy doing my internship and I didn't really feel it. But yes, just when my studies were there, like waking up and being at home, uh, not going in a full bus, and when it's raining, especially waking up early, nah, but everything else, just being at home was the best. And cooking, I enjoyed that I could cook at home. That was also one of the best things. <laughs> and yes, I can see that the comments or whatever is working now. Yes. Them. Yeah. So everything is good. Everything is all right. The platform deserves our $20. So <laughs> what skills did you guys pick up during the lockdown is another question that we have prepared. <clears throat> um, because we were just talking about things that we will miss doing in a lockdown. So I'm pretty sure that there are also some things that we have picked up during the lockdown, which we would not otherwise be able to do. And I'm pretty sure that for Four out of five of these people, it's not going to be working out because I'm pretty sure that Danessa is the only one who stuck with, with her routine. For the rest of us, not very good. So, Yaro, what is something that you have picked up during the lockdown? Well, uh, I'm not 100% sure if I picked it up or if we would say I picked it up if I picked it up on 100%. But uh, uh, since we mentioned, since we have to do majority of our education or our work from home you know it means we need to we need to be able force to force ourselves to do so right so be, before the corona came uh, i was the person that you know how said, i preferred doing productive work from places that you know like were productive for me so you know i do school work at school you know i do work at work you know and when i'm at home you know i do everything but you know this kind this kind of activities you know well Corona came and you know, I, I had to adjust, I had to adapt somehow. And even though I would still prefer 
to let's say do school work school work at school and do work uh, in the office or somewhere else I need to do it from home and I believe I'm getting slightly better with that so yeah that's what I learned sort of Mandara, what is something that you have learned or picked up or tried? Well, as I mentioned, my cooking. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I was cooking a lot and doing some recipes. So maybe in the future, guys, you would like to see some cooking lessons. That'd be great. <laughs> and um, well, I really love photography. So I did and still do a lot of photography and I combine it with social media so I can do great posts for you guys. And yeah, I mean, nothing much, just during the lockdown. It feels like now it's a bit easier and I don't feel like it's lockdown in some sort of way. Um, during that time, I was just doing my internship. So basically picking up those skills during that time, like social media, photography, videography, and so on. Yeah, well, let me just say that the pictures you were taking and showing us, they look absolutely amazing. So I'm really looking forward to see them on, <laughs> on social media. And I think everyone that's watching should uh, definitely subscribe. Subscribe. Yes. No, follow us on Instagram. Yeah. Because if that's I may. where. Yeah, go on. No, please continue. Uh, if I may, also, guys, if you have some great photos or videos also to share to us, uh, feel free to tag us or use the hashtag Student Survival Guide. We would be happy to just share it on Instagram or Facebook because it's always great to not share content from us, but also from you guys, because I'm pretty sure you can give us really lovely content too. So don't and, be shy. And of course, it's not stealing if we ask for it first, right? <laughs> yes. So, Denisa, up to you now. The spotlight is yours. What did you pick up? Yes, well, basically, uh, I learned how to knit. Uh, in Denmark, uh, knitting is pretty trendy, so it's not just for old grandmas like it usually is in Eastern Europe. But uh, a lot of young people do it, and uh, there's a lot of resources to buy, uh, or like materials to buy, and uh, it's actually pretty fun in a way. Uh, and you can do a lot of things. Uh, I, for now, I just try to do a hat, um, but yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, try to do a, maybe a sweater or some other things. So basically, I think I picked up a very important skill, which is making uh, clothes for the winter. And winters in Denmark are pretty cold. <laughs> and how is the hat coming along? Oh, the, the hat is done. It's nice. Well, not perfect, but it's nice. <laughs> it, it's wearable. <laughs> it's going to protect you from the harsh Danish winter. Yeah, yeah, so exactly, exactly. That counts. Yeah, knitting. That's cool. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, my girlfriend also bought the, the knitting kit and it's been in the wardrobe ever since. So best 50 kronas we have ever spent. Yeah, but uh, you know, she can pick it up next winter. So No, I'm still hoping. She promised me some gloves or something. So I'm still waiting for those. If she's watching this, then she knows I'm still waiting. Yeah. Michael? Yeah, actually, Denisa, can you make us yeah. like student survival hats or like to knit something for us? That would be amazing. I appreciate it so much how uh, much you trust my skills. Oh, well, yeah, of course. But I cannot say yes for now. Maybe maybe in winter. Let me try yeah, more until then. Well, no pressure, but it was snowing today. So yeah. you <laughs> better right. get to get to knitting. That's right. How was it in uh, Roskilde, Michael? Was it also snowing in there? You have no idea. It was uh, it was a uh, yeah, snowstorm here. But uh, then five minutes later, it was blue skies and sun. Uh, okay. I mean, that's... Typical Danish April, right? Yeah, yeah, precisely. Yeah. Danish weather is basically like uh, a woman on her period, just so everyone knows. Super moody, and you can have four seasons in one day. That's fun. Fair enough. Fair enough. I I have to agree. Yes. Yeah. This is this is something that I was not expecting. That like. When I thought about Denmark, I thought that everyone is going to be having umbrellas somewhere with them. And yet I could never see an umbrella for like a year in my life. Then I, then I opened one up and I realized why not? Because it just in, in five seconds. So that's something for you guys. If you are planning to pack to Denmark, then um, no need to pack an umbrella. No one is using it anyways. And also do not pack a hat. I had to find out uh, the hard way. 
But uh, yeah, so Michael, what did you learn in lockdown? Uh, well, actually, when you noticed your girlfriend spending money for the knitting kit, uh, so I can maybe relate because I think that in the past year I picked up maybe 10 different hobbies just to pick something new two days after like really i i was one week i was super interested into baking i i I get i got all the supplies that then then gardening was was uh, the thing i was i was living for um then then cooking and all all the different stuff um but that's just because i was bored um so yeah really like learning about new hobbies then watching ten thousands of videos um um yeah ten thousands of videos about the topic and then just tossing it just to find something new and more interesting so yeah that's that's a skill i i gained well we just right now had a question in the chat about the new university programs opening up uh, since corona and uh, to answer that question, uh, we do not know about any new university programs. So if there are any new university programs, if universities have adapted to this new corona system, uh, let us know in the chat. Uh, I think it could be very interesting to talk about those. But uh, if that was a question towards us, then we do not know about any of them. Um, so next up is... Um, actually, we don't know what is next. I think we can just uh, have a cozy time and chat a bit. So, guys, what are you going to do in this week? Uh, what is the funniest thing that you will be doing this week? What is the funniest thing that you did the past weekend? And uh, we can slowly wrap it up. So, Yaro, what are your plans for this week? Oh, well, needless to say, uh, after, the, after the holidays, uh, I think starting tomorrow, I'm going back into the proper educational process. Uh, actually, in my case, I... I'm about to start, I believe it is like four to six week long period with like a practical part. I do this program, it's called International Economic Consulting. So I have this part which is called Applied Economic Consulting. So now after semester and a half of hard theory, you know, I'm, I'm maybe I will, I will manage to practice it a little bit. So you know, we'll see how it goes, honestly. I, you know, I'm sort of like a semi excited, semi terrified. Uh, especially since we, as we mentioned, you know, during the during the corona, you know, I didn't really met any of my classmates. So I think starting tomorrow it's going to be me and a bunch of strangers. And well, normally I usually when I meet strangers, I usually give them a beer or something, but I cannot really do it this time. So I need to I need to prepare some bulletproof strategy, hopefully that will help me to survive through this four to six weeks without, you know, angering. My, class, my classmates, so we'll see how it goes, honestly. Good luck with that, Yaro. Thank you. And then, Denisa, what are your plans for this week? Well, let's just say that as young people in Denmark, you will be pretty busy. So that's what I'm going to be this week as well, probably like all of you guys. Um, now that we had a few days of, a uh, um, few free days because of the Easter holiday, uh, I kind of got a bit lazy, so I enjoyed myself a bit. So now it's time to get back on track. So yeah, I'm going to work on my Danish a lot this week because next week I have an exam. So yeah, one needs to prepare. Good luck with the Danish. Thanks. If you want, Denise, you can practice with me. Oh, I would love to practice. I'm speaking because <laughs> I'm bad at that. But sure, Michael, sure. I will get in touch with you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yes, so, Michael, what what are you going to be doing next week? And you say it in Danish. Ja, men jeg har faktisk en eksamen. Og det er på onsdag, eller på torsdag. Og så har jeg afleveret i morgen. Fordi jeg arbejder alt for meget. Så jeg har klemt, at jeg har en aflevering fra video content creation. Og ja, så faktisk, jeg skal starte med det net. Så jeg har været måske 15 timer at få det færdigt. Um, how much of the things I said you understood? I'm not convinced yet. I'm not convinced. I think it might have been German. I'm not sure. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just teasing you. 
Uh, so yes. we are going to have an exam, you said? Uh, yes, um, because I have to upload um, a video that uh, I have to make um, from video to to, to um, um, elective subject called video content creation, which I haven't started yet, or I started before this live stream. So uh, I have this night to, to finish it uh, and then upload it in the morning. Uh, it's it's not going to be hard. It's it's a two two minute video, but uh, yeah. Well, you can just do it right now. We will just uh, screen share whatever you are doing right now. <laughs> you can just capture it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean the 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 thing is that I I purchased the the software. Uh, I just purchased Final Cut, and I never worked with that before, so I'm kind of lost. So I'm kind of you know watching five minutes of a tutorial video and then like doing exactly what the person is doing and then watching an another five minutes. So, yeah. <laughs> well, good luck with Final Cut. It can be hard. I, I heard it's easier than uh, Premiere Pro. It, it is much more easy than Premiere, but also not so many functions, but it's okay. Like, get the job done. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't but start yeah, I mean, kicking out about it, guys. No, 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 no. But but, but otherwise, um, yeah, I'm I'm off this week. I, I I I'm working next Sunday, so so I I just I'm, I'm gonna relax. I didn't have a more than two days off for the past four months, so so I'm just gonna start some gardening. I want to get a beautiful lawn, so so yeah, I'm just gonna relax. What about you, Michael? Um, I'm planning to, um, to, to bring more latest information to all the students that are thinking about studying in Denmark, uh, while also focusing on my own studies so they don't um, kick me out from my study group and from my university, because that would suck. So I'll also, I'll also do some studying on my own. I've actually picked up this, uh, this program on, uh, on Meg. It's called Numbers. It's similar to Excel, but it's like much easier. And so I use, use it to keep track of things that I'm doing and things I'm studying. And I'm like really hyped and um, making little tiny formulas and progress bars where they do not necessarily need to be, but it's just fun because Excel is, is fun a bit if you're a nerdy, I guess. So that's what I'll be doing probably throughout the week, uh, just screwing around with this, uh, with this program. Um, and Madara, what are your plans for the rest of the week? Uh. Yeah, um, before that, actually, would love to congratulate Samantha, who is from South Africa, and she got a place to do her master's in August here in Copenhagen, as I understand. So that's really great. We're very happy. <laughs> that's the new thing we do whenever someone gets accepted. Before. Yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, nothing new from the usual, like doing the social media, posting the content, uh, doing photography. But I do need to get back on track with the running because I was really, really motivated and I did it for the two weeks pretty well. But then you just took a break on one day, then two days, and then you look back and it's been a whole yeah. week. <laughs> it's all of a sudden 2021. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So uh, yeah, since I'm using a lot of computer, just sitting on my ass, I need to get back and running. So that's what I'm going to do. Run, run. Too bad that the weather doesn't help that much with that. Yeah, today I, I wanted to, but then you go out, it's like snow, then suddenly sunny, and you just can't understand. Like you dress up, you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to go run, and snow, you're like, okay, never mind. Yeah, you know, uh, but you know what the Danes say, you know, there's not like a bad weather, there's only like a bad clothes for yeah, certain weather. True. Uh, exactly. <laughs> this, this I never heard a Danish person say something like this. I, I heard all the internationals say that <laughs> Danish people say that, but I never heard a, a single Dane saying that. Yeah. Actually, Probably, it might be possible. <laughs> they must be complaining about the weather too, I'm pretty sure. But I'm actually very impressed how they... I remember when I used to work as an au pair, I went to this outside theater and it started to pour so much, like so much. But everyone, literally everyone except me, obviously, was in this raincoat. And they were just enjoying the theater and the actors as well. And there were like, I don't know, thousands of people. And they were like, eh, just a little bit of rain, even though it was 
pouring a lot. So they're just born with this. Yeah. It's in their blood. <laughs> I mean, I've been here for almost five years now and the weather still affects me and yeah. I still cannot do certain things because of the weather or I just use it as an excuse. But yeah, people should prepare for this when they move to Denmark, that's for sure. Yeah. Get some uh, vitamin B pills as well. <laughs> Is that the one that you're missing when you don't have exposure to sun? Yes. Yeah. That's that's what I've been using as an excuse for being angry at people for the last half a year. I just don't have enough of this vitamin thing, I guess. Get out of here. Um, so, guys, I think let's wrap it up. That was uh, everything that we wanted to share with you today. Thank you very much for tuning in to our weekly live stream that we hope we are going to repeat next week. And we hope that we are going to see you either on Facebook or on YouTube next week as well. As always, you can find more blogs and relevant information on our website. Students are get a DK. Make sure to follow our social media because that's where you get the latest updates. And if you haven't done so yet, then go and read uh, the weekly recap. Make sure that you stay informed about life in Denmark and uh, enjoy your studies. And if you are coming to Denmark, then we will very much look. We are very much looking forward to see you here once you get here. Um, and if you are just thinking about studying in Denmark, we have a bunch of videos that might convince you why it is a good idea to actually move and study in here start your life and all of those good stuff. Uh, guys, thank you, Madara, Denisa, Yaro, Michael, for joining me today doing this live stream. Uh, we will see you all next week. So for now, just uh, wave goodbye and um, <laughs> goodbye, I, I guess. Bye-bye. <laughs>